Um, I think, though, you know, a couple of points that you have made is that, yes, it's very rare. I mean, there are some magazines in particular who will give you a very precise format in terms of the number of words they're looking for, the type of um, interview, the number of people you speak to, or how you'll format it in terms of uh, case studies and so on. But much of the time, you're on your own. Um, and uh, and the sorts of problems that that can throw up in a practical situation um, are twofold, really. I think we've seen in the classroom exercises um, quite, it's quite common for um, people not to do sufficient research so that then they really don't know how to progress the interview. Um, if you're doing a face-to-face, -face, it's surprising how much you can get out somebody, especially if it's a factually based interview, in 10 minutes. And I've certainly seen students sort of in sort of test exercises suddenly find them around, um, you know, unable to think of the next question to ask. And, and that's really just a case of um, advising you to prepare and research in advance and um, think through where you want the, the interviewer um, to go. Um, <laughs> the um, you, a couple of you are touching on interesting sort of aspects of uh, sort of different problems associated with interviews. And for example, um, you were asking about how people talking if they won't let you get in a question, uh, get a question in edgeways, Julie. Uh, I mean, generally, for example, the worst case scenario, I think, is trying to conduct a group interview. Um, and I think they're probably generally best avoided if you can, certainly from a um, if you're trying to write down people's responses. Because, of course, if you've got a lively group discussion, the danger is it gets too lively and they're all speaking over each other and you're trying to take notes and you're not able to see who's saying what. And it's very easy to get um, confused by it. I mean, it's a format that can work quite well. On television, when you can see who's talking, it's often a problem from radio where you can't see who's talking. So if you've got a, a big group and they're all talking over each other, you often need to put in a chair um, like the, um, you know, the, the, the Jonathan de Bobby and so on on any questions or, or an election night story, who's going to control who's speaking at what time. And effectively, radio does that a lot, as we know from whether it's Women's Hour Debates or Andrew Mars, start the week. If you've got a panel in, you need to be aware of the fact that listeners can't see what people are doing. So the, the point we've just been making, obviously, is that um, some of the challenges that, we've, that we're talking about in interviews are different depending on which media we're actually using. Um, clearly, radio poses certain challenges because we can't see what... Um, somebody's saying. Um, TV, because it is so visual, um, begs a slightly different approach. Nick is making a very practical point of, you know, if you are reliant on a, on a tape recorder, don't, um, that is the crucial thing, don't run out of batteries and don't make sure that it keeps um, going. It's one reason why, as Jilly says, um, certainly in the regional press, many editors would like you to have um, shorthand to 100 words a minute so that you're not reliant on a tape recorder. And um, not only that, uh, although tape recorders obviously um, provide you with an accurate transcript, it's quite a time-consuming process to transcribe a long interview. The great advantage of, um, of, um, of actually uh, using shorthand is that you can edit as you go along or highlight and you're not in a position where you have to spend hours transcribing a whole interview um, uh, before actually launching into your feature. So um, certainly it's a great advantage there. Um, there is Steinway, a book that you mentioned, but I can't remember the title off, offhand. Um, it, uh, yes, Nicola, keep, hang on to your notes, hang on to your tapes. Um, and the great thing about it, I mean, we have both shorthand and um, tape recorders have been useful in a uh, in courts of law, especially when it comes to libel action, because of course it's possible that the um, even if you've quoted somebody accurately, that they um, 
may regret it afterwards or may challenge you. Uh, and obviously, whether that record is shorthand or tape, um, it can be um, admissible in evidence in a, um, in, in, a, in a court case. And in fact, judges in the past have criticised um, Fleet Street journalists for not having um, a clear shorthand uh, note. A quick um, answer to is it Rye's question was, um, a T-line tends to be the um, preferred shorthand note for journalists, but it does take time um, to pick up. And um, I think, uh, you know, if you're having sort of, uh, you know, sort of one lesson a week, then it's, you know, it's a sort of six-month business. If you're intensively studying it and you've got a couple of lessons a day, um, and you're practicing every night, then it's possible to do it in, um, you know, perhaps sort of 12 to 16 weeks at a push. Um, but it's um, it's one of those skills that directly responds to the amount of practice that you um, put in. Um, Shazi, I don't want to go too far off the um, off the point, but if you are a freelance working on your own, then certainly you might want to think about um, libel. So um, there is a danger from a legal point of view that you could be sued as well as the publication that's used your piece. And, um, you know, certainly uh, because libel actions can be so expensive, that's something I'd, I'd think about if you're not actually um, a staff writer, although it takes us slightly off our um, uh, patch. What I did want to do before we... Um, get too far down the, down the road because I see time's ticking away um, is um, just take us a step forward from news articles which we've basically been talking about where a lot of the time a telephone interview is going to be adequate because we're trying to f check facts and get um, uh, get things information together in a short space of time to situations where features um, where more in-depth or face-to-face -face interviews are more relevant, um, which tend to be involved with features, which might be uh, news features or, or profiles or so on. Um, and that's, of course, a situation where there's more focus on you as, a, as an interviewer and it's more of a challenge going into your first um, situation where you're sitting down and interviewing somebody for a period of time, you know, what precautions should you take um, and what are you hoping to get out of it? Well, I think for both um, news features and news features and news backgrounders and so on, which are very much the same, the um, usually that will be an issue based um, feature, perhaps, although sometimes it can be focused on a particular individual. I mean, either way, the biggest secret is to is to do your research in advance. Um, and the biggest flaw, I think, you know, in in poor interviewing, is is um, is simply not doing enough homework, because partly one of the challenges is to develop questions in advance so you don't run out of steam. It's surprising, as we said, how much you can get through in a few minutes. So if you're going to interview somebody for an hour and a half, um, you don't want to be looking embarrassed and going, well, I can't think of anything else to ask you. Um, I think, you know, the, the, you need to be prepared um, as much as you can. It's, it's um, um, in terms of both any background information, the more that you have about them, the better a position you are to put them at their ease. To, I mean, it's obviously flattering that somebody's done that research, and equally it's very insulting, especially perhaps with an actor or a politician or somebody who's used to to interviews if you show that you just simply don't know who they are. Um, and as well as, you know, flattering them by their, your interest, I think it's also um, likely to rub off in terms of impressing them in, in terms of your professionalism, that your background knowledge of them and your ability to ask sensible and detailed questions um, is only going to reflect sort of well on you. Um, I, Jilly's point, uh, where at all possible, um, I don't like uh, sending questions in advance. You know, uh, there are certain circumstances where it's necessary to uh, flag questions up. I mean, for example, if, you, if you're looking for, you know, some